Oh my goodness. Uh, hello everyone and welcome to the RPG Exploration Society right here on Saving Throw. Uh, my name is Rich and I will be your guide, game master, both, we'll see, um, <laughs> through the Dune RPG by Magnificus Games, uh, Dune Adventures in the Imperium. I'm so excited for this. Uh, this is part two of our five-part Learn to Play series. We have created the House of Posh together as a unit. And uh, and pretty soon today, we're gonna start building our characters and, and get to our adventure, uh, all the while talking to you about how to make your own characters um, and how to run this game for yourself. And I am so excited um, to be joined by this fantastic group of superheroes. Uh, I'm in, oh my gosh, building the House of, of Posh was so fun last time and I can't wait to see what characters come out of it finally. I know we got names, but we're not done yet. I'm so excited. Um, let me uh, real quick do some introductions before we get started. Um, let's go. Oh my goodness, around my screen. Uh, I'm gonna start with B. hello B. <laughs> hello, uh, well, quick introduction. My name is B. my pronouns are they, them. I am the community manager for Dungeons and Dragons Adventure League. And uh, I'm gonna be playing a Fremen today. So I've got my goggles. I don't have any kind of like <laughs> gas masks to really make this work, but I'm ready. For character creation as ready as you could be absolutely i like it wow um all right uh let's see next up we have cohen let's go let's take Ella. a huge sip of water uh, uh, i was watching <laughs> hi hi i'm cohen uh i am a uh frequent streamer at game worms uh worms in the chat please thank you uh we uh i am they them uh drohai is my character's name uh don't look it up uh, spoilers. Uh, I'm very excited to play a twisted Mintat. Uh, not in the style of the uh, nasty boy from the books. I'm gonna do my own thing, trying to reclaim twisted Mintats. There's a lot of there's a lot of a lot of you know a lot of drama out there about them. Don't believe everything you hear. Uh, you can trust Good. me. Good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. All right. Uh, next up is Justin. I have to unmute my mic because I was busy typing. Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Justin. I'm on a show called Albert Soup right here on Saving Throw Show. <laughs> uh, I, also, I also DJ uh, at uh, DJ Pirate Rabbits. Uh, you know, it's it's a fun time. Check me out there. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Hi. Fantastic. Hello, ready, hello. I'm, I'm ready to uh, be our spacefaring agent. I mean, spacefarer. <laughs> I mean, X-Wing pilot. The chaos has begun already. I appreciate it. Yeah. I, <laughs> All I, right. I thought that's yeah. why you had invited me on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. And Teos. Hello, Rich. Hello, everybody. B, congratulations on that AL position. I'm super excited. Uh, I'm Teos. I'm going to be playing Dr. Yewan, and you can find me at alphastream.org, writing all your blogs on how to do all kinds of fun things with the D&D. Uh, and on the podcast, Mastering Dungeons, where we do, in fact, master a dungeon or two per episode. I like it. I like it. Um, and I'm glad you were with us on Albert Soup very recently. I also just have to say that uh, your name I, is, is fantastic because it, it, like, it hurts me <laughs> as I am reading your character's name. I know what may be coming. <laughs> no, I don't. I have no idea. Um, we haven't talked about this at all. Um, there's also on our screen, I think up that way maybe, um, there's a, an empty box at the moment. Uh, Elisa Pearl will be joining us uh, very shortly and uh, as we get into this character creation deal. She's um, making I'm an entrance, you know? Right, right. <laughs> like you do on Dune. I mean, you have to. You have to. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, perfect. Uh, I'm so excited to have you all, and thanks for bearing with me with my excitement, because I have a lot. Uh, because last time we decided to build the House of Posh, which I where we started, I don't know, but we came so far as we created this, this house dedicated to, um, to creating new types of food, to building a, a center, the rack that was all about, I don't know, illusory entertainment. I keep thinking about it as like space Las Vegas kind of, but um, Disneyland Vegas, I think that came up last time. Las um, Vegas, I think. La yes, I like it. Uh, there we go, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and then also dealing a little bit with just a little bit with assassination, you know, just like a little bit. Um, it was very cool. I like that a lot. So, just a um, touch. Just a touch, right? Sprinkle. <laughs> uh, I love building houses. Uh, I think it's such a fun way to kind of start this whole thing, um, just because you all are now going to make characters who are attached to that house somehow. Um, 
whether you are involved in, uh, I don't know, kind of the leadership side, whether you're not, whether you're on the opposite, maybe on the outs, who knows? Um, but somehow we'll all be connected to the wonderful House of Posh, and I'm so excited to find out how as we get into this today. Um, oh my goodness. Um, let's see, what's, uh, what was your favorite part about the, the House of Posh as we were building that last time? Anyone, any highlights? <laughs> I, I, I particularly uh, love that our spy master is is a very front facing figure and mm -hmm. stands out in front of everyone. I, I that's a power move, and I and I think that's a lot of fun. And I think I think I hope I hope that comes up in the game. Yeah. And uh, you know it, it's 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 pretty enjoyable and in a pretty fun image. So yeah, I like I had it. A I had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> it's not normal, but it's great. It's so good. <laughs> I liked what we did around the world where it's this idea that it's sort of like in some places wild and some places industrial because it's like all this food being created and packaged and none of it is like what it seems like you might think you're eating steak and we're like, yeah, sure, you're eating steak. But what that steak is made out of could be anything. It could be something <laughs> really quite like you don't want to see it. Right. Right. Absolutely. Mm. It's probably uh, good. I'm really excited <laughs> for our NPCs. We have a like a wonderful group of uh, people in positions of power with wonderful names, like uh, Guy Fieri. Um, what's the butter lady? What's her name again? Paula oh, Dean. Paula Dean. <laughs> Paula Dean. Uh, <laughs> who yeah. we're her nemesis, but we're not. She's not our nemesis, and I live <laughs> for that. It's the power <laughs> position for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. I love that building those was part of the process, like of <laughs> creating this world together. That was fantastic. Right. Oh my gosh. Oh, cool. look, chat. Hey, everyone. Hype train. Woo! Hey. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Oh, and subs going out, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, I should mention before we really get going on this that, of course, every single episode for the next, uh, we got four weeks left, uh, you have an opportunity to win a copy of the Dune RPG. We've got three to give away every single episode. And if you are interested in getting your own copy, you need to make sure that you follow Saving Throw uh, here on Twitch. Um, and then you need to type in uh, exclamation mark raffle uh, and then type in a number. I think it's from one to 10 um, to get you some spots in that raffle. If you sub, that's worth some more as well. Like, Get in there and get yourself a copy of this game because I think it's a ton of fun um, and and huge and awesome surprise uh, announced today that uh, Dune is also going to be available. I hope it was announced today <laughs> and not tomorrow um, on Roll20, which we're going to be taking a look at today. And I'm really, really excited. So yes, very uh, cool. It's a, it's a gorgeous book. Um, it really is. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, cool, cool. Well, um, how do we feel? Are we ready? Should we start jumping in? I'm excited. We had some character concepts last time. I know they've led you to names already, but let's uh, let's start showing folks how to build these characters. Mm -hmm. um, my goodness, we have a lot to do, which is fun. Um, Dom is going to be showing off, I believe, some of our characters as we are developing these. So I'm really excited for folks, even at home in the stream, to start seeing us mess around with these sheets. Folks, <laughs> you're going to be right at the table, looking over our shoulder. It's going to be right? like you're right there. It's going to be absolutely fun. very excited about this. <laughs> you will um, smell the spice. You'll know it all. Ooh, I like that. So close, you'll smell the spice. Um, we're playing in 4D today. <laughs> oh. I'm so someday I'll see a movie in 4D. All right. <laughs> sure. um, I saw right? one of the Star Wars movies with the shaking seats and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, those were fun. I saw a SpongeBob movie like that. That oh, seems like I, that seems difference. like the better thing to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smell vision. They, uh, uh, they offered it for, yeah. for F9 around here, and I just thought it would all smell like gasoline, and I was not up for that. It would have <laughs> smelled like Corona. It would have smelled like NOS, and it would have smelled <laughs> like family. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> actually, this group might actually be able to uh, start packaging the smell of family as a spice to give out. Maybe that would make our, our meals taste better. Ooh. If you're lonely, eat this frozen meal and uh, you'll smell family. That Is that a thing we do? I don't know. Mm, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Might be something on the uh, under under the table kind of deals. Sure, sure. Yeah, we could just copy the ge we could copy the gene their genome, warp mm -hmm. it a little bit. Uh huh. And so it smells like not them, but someone related to them. <laughs> Is that weirder or better? Oh, it's know. it's super screwed up. I just uh, you know uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm along for I'm yes sanding. <laughs> My hand is my um, hand is not on the tiller of the ethics here, and, and we uh, stand very excited too. So that's nice. 
good, good, good. Right? Good. That's what people really care oh. about in this instance. That's wow. peace of mind. This is this is quite a future. I like it a lot. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. So we're building our characters today, and we're going through the process of planned character creation. Um, there are two ways to make characters in this game. One of them is what we're going to be doing, and the other method is to make it while playing the game, uh, which is kind of interesting. You start with some of your things, um, and as game progresses, you might decide you have a new talent or a new focus if it makes sense for your character. It's an intriguing way to play, I think, for a group of folks who are are, are good at the game and you know ready to play the game they know what's going on um we want to show you that right from the beginning how all of this works so we're going to do planned character construction oh Ooh, my goodness Lisa! Yeah. Yay! Welcome. hello <laughs> hi everybody what how are you doing yeah. what did i miss uh, oh. uh... <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. We did some introductions. We talked a little bit about our favorite parts of the House of Posh, which I believe uh, is actually on the screen right now. Um, you can check out some of the basics of, of what we came up with last time right there. Um, Aliza, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited because you posted on Twitter during our game, even your your sketch of uh, our, <laughs> our our house icon, um, yes. and I was, I was so, so happy excited. to see that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I built our copy of that using some some graphics, but oh my gosh, I was so like immediately like, yes, it's on. The House of Posh is real. Yes, <laughs> and we will grind you. Yes. And oh, we will. I love it. Such a threatening <laughs> phrase. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, good. That's okay. so powerful saying it. Yeah. I mean, but could it be taken in other ways? Like, hey, buddy, uh -huh. let's hang out. I'll grind you. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah, right. I think, I Your think tone the... of voice is not. It, no, it doesn't. Well, I, initially I thought of a different way to take it, but I thought you know being fun and excited was going to be better, but apparently not. Look, it <laughs> might be. Look, it might be violent. It might be chill. Oh, it might be yeah. horny. We don't know. There we you go. You know, it's yeah. it's, it's, it's it, that's it, that that is the type of all-purpose, uncertain criminal element we bring mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the Dune universe, the Dune of yep. Race. Mm -hmm. Yep. The Duneverse? Oh my gosh, I the love Duneverse. it. The uh -huh. <laughs> I, I love that uh, you show up like at the landing port in the rack, of course, and you're looking around this strange city. What's going on? Keep saying we will grind you. What does that mean? <laughs> and all the guards, everyone here is like, don't worry about it. It's <laughs> <laughs> fine. Amazing. Oh, wow. Well, uh, well, we were just talking a little bit, like getting into character creation, um, talking about how that's going to go. And we are, uh, like I said, looking on roll 20 and we're going to be making our characters on there going through the steps that you would normally go through uh there at home we began already last time with the character concepts i think the biggest deal out of you know coming from our our house and i don't know if any of those have changed over the last week or so has anyone anyone uh, thought their concept through a little more concretely since last week um I really, really, really want a baby sandworm that I took off planet, like I took it off Arrakis, which is incredibly right. illegal and definitely not advised. No. Um, I also <laughs> took a bunch of sand with me, so like I keep it in like um, like a fish bowl, but the fish bowl has sand instead of water. Mm. Um, gotcha. I just kind of keep that under my arm permanently, and like you almost unanimously, Elisa, I do have to get your confirmation that you're comfortable with this name, but I want my baby sandworm to be called Spicy Poops. Are you are you okay with that? Uh, yeah, I'm, o I'm okay. I'm okay with spicy poops. Okay, perfect. Everybody should love spicy poops. So I'm excited for this. Right. Yeah. I even I even put in the chat that spicy poops is the way to go. Oh, I mean, someone put in the chat that spicy poops is the way to go. <laughs> Some stranger. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do love this. Um, Excellent. Right? Um, yeah. This, so that's pretty much as much idea. as I fleshed out. Yeah. Um, that's enough. I mean, that's a great starting point. <laughs> Anyone yeah, else? That's that's the bulk of my character right there. <laughs> so Perfect. I was thinking about being a farm boy who ran into a couple of droids in the middle of the desert and uh, mm -hmm. met up with an old man. And no, no. <laughs> I mean, it's original, so you've got yeah. that going mm -hmm. on. That's a good point. Dom, I know. <laughs> we won't stop you. Dom, this is only going to be a four-player game now. Yeah. <laughs> I, think you, I, I think you can get a Disney Plus series out of this. Oh, good. Yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. uh, wow. No, no, no. I know you've thought quite a lot about your character already, Justin. It will be. Right? Right? What you got? Are you saving it? I'm saving it. Okay, okay. We won't get into I, too much. Oh. No, no. I, I will reveal that my initials are BM. 
Okay. <laughs> Monster. <laughs> All right. Uh, can I bring this up into the serious category? Yeah. Yeah, we're ready. All right. So, uh, Doctor Yewan is um, my concept here. It's similar to what we talked about last time. So mm -hmm. I wanted to go with a Sook Doctor. And the Sook Doctors are one of those old schools that was created after the Butlerian Jihad when it was sort of like, how do we make computers but not computers, they're people. Mm -hmm. And this guy founded this school of uh, kind of two things. One is like super smart doctor stuff. And then the second part is you will do no harm to people. And I'm dispensing with that mm. second part. <laughs> <laughs> you right. are officially scary. <laughs> what could go wrong? Um, and no, so the idea yeah. is that I went through all this training. I went through a lot of the conditioning. And if I think this is what I'm going with, and I'm, I'm totally open to, to options. But the idea is that if anyone asks, what I say is that it's, it's horribly expensive. And so I simply had to, you know, discretionary funds, I had to withdraw, but I will return as soon as I can. Unfortunately, my duties in the house keep me busy. And so I just kind of never get to go back, right? I see. I'm like that one. One See. guy that you probably know that, that always says they're going to go back and finish. I, that's me. And uh, but the reality, I think, is, you know, spoilers, that it's the house that kind of uh, actually withdrew the funding so that I can actually say this. And it's true. So the house of Posh was paying for my medical studies, mm -hmm. said you're out of funds. And so it's really true that I that I had to withdraw for academic reasons. But it's because this gives me so much latitude in what I'm able to do. I see. I see. So it's like, it's like they were looking at a calendar the whole time and just waiting for, oh, conditioning starts next week. Let's pull our funds. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> that's it's a excellent. long process, but at the very end is where you really kind of pass that test that says that you will do no harm to any living thing. Yeah. And that's right around the time mm -hmm. when the money ran out. Very nice. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. And once wow. we get into details, I've got a lot of questions for everybody, including Chad, as to which direction I should go in. So, but, but that's my foundation kind of principle. I like it. Hmm. We're going to get along. <laughs> the vibe of my character is like, they're kind of edgy, very serious, but their doctrine, because I'm a Fremen, it's very much, it's all about the sandworms and like Muad'Dib and the God. Um, so I, despite my lack of seriousness, I will be playing a serious character. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to vibe really well. Sweet. Perfect. Um, Kel and Elisa, any thoughts? So far, or is this a fresh palette? <laughs> Uh, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm coming in with the, with the basic idea that I came up with three minutes ago, which is Twisted Mintat, who yeah. really is trying to play against type. He's just trying, like, he's like, I, it's like, look, I know what you're thinking. Twisted <laughs> Mintat, buy it. But sure, sure. All of the ethics of a computer, uh, you know, all of the brains of a computer and none of the ethics of a human. But mm -hmm. don't worry, uh, I'm a good guy. Like, it's sort of that, like, too much to prove. But like going against base, going against the instincts that are just like, oh, I can't wait to hurt somebody. But it's like, oh, uh, mm, mm. so I'm I'm looking <laughs> for a way to play against type in that way. Uh, I, I I imagine that the house was like because a twisted mint hat is like m probably more expensive and harder to get. Uh, so they're they're probably a little disappointed that I'm not that they were like they were like, oh yeah, come on, you're gonna be our you're gonna be our you know our our tech bro, essentially, like our, our soulless computer per person. <laughs> and I'm like, mm -hmm. I, that's not that's not what I'm about. I care about, but doesn't doesn't really <laughs> care about people, but really wants to wants to. Gotcha. So that's what I'm coming in with this. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, and Aliza, what about you? We, we talked about your character a bit last time. And you had some some cool ideas for a Bene Gesserit. Yeah. I, I want her to be kind of like a, a monk, if we're talking in D&D comparison. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she can fight. She uh, is very disciplined, very uh, focused. Um, I haven't really thought much past that. And just Perfect. Thinking, yeah, just thinking about the Bene Gesserit and their whole deal. They, cause they, it seems like their loyalty is to the, the organization of Bene Gesserit, but then also they have such huge impact on the social order so yeah. <laughs> am i someone who is like inserted into a family to like give birth to heirs or am i someone who's there to protect people or am i a political 
wheeler and dealer. I think actually I said I was going to be an ambassador of some kind, right? Or a diplomat. I do remember that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that actually does help narrow it down. Okay. Um, but that yeah, sounds I, don't, good. I don't have much else besides that. I can just that is okay. form it as we go. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You can also wait until you have some uh, aspect of the adventure and kind of go like, that's what I'm here for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. True. Mm-hmm. Very true. It works well with the Bene Gesserit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. They seem to like, they can kind of be in any part of society, it seems like. Yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I do like that. Like, we're not maybe, you know, it, when it comes up, suddenly our purpose is revealed. I, I'm mm-hmm. a big fan of that. So, sounds good. This is good. This is a great start. Um, we're, we're taking a look at our character sheets on Roll20, if you are. Uh, actually, the first thing that we do is you, um, if you have a faction, and it sounds like we have some factions, you want to go ahead and just write them in, just make a note. These are specifically a faction if you, you know, if you feel some loyalty to them, make sure you write it down. If you don't, you could write X <laughs> if you wanted to in front of it, uh, you know. If you think it's to the, the point of like rivalry, you know, I don't know if, if Teos, if your character is like lost in the universe and they have forgotten about you over the <laughs> time since you were in the the uh, the school, but I, we I could do something that like they, that as well. They keep track of me uh, be, because I'm this sort of dangerous element. Am I really com- coming back? Is it really this like, you know, waiting for yeah. the next tuition payment? Uh, or am I going to upend the whole thing? And, and, and I think that I, I spend a lot of time keeping them from finding out or any other house from finding out sort of what my motives are. Fair enough. So I Fair claim enough. to be from that faction. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, then put it down there so that people know, right? The things we write down are things that are going to be important. If it's unimportant, we're not going to bother with it because, you know, these uh-huh. are these all the things that we see on this sheet are things that we should be able to kind of look at your character, talk to you for five minutes, and someone else would know most of this stuff. It's kind of, it's how it goes. Yeah. Lisa. Question. Uh, um, uh-huh. Am I, uh, how can I edit my character sheet in Roll20? Ooh, that is a good question. Um, let's see, if you click on your character, and then um, there is up at the top left, there's like a little dual screen button. That's Ooh, where I, I like to wait. go. I think I need to back up a few steps. So I'm on the, the campaign page. Mm-hmm. I click launch game. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And that'll um, bring you into the world. <laughs> Okay. Um, and then I have a character set up for you at the top right. Top right. You have to top right. access the journal page. Yes. Oh. That is, is blank tab. for me, the journal page. Oh, I don't see you in the Are campaign. You, you. you. I think you're in the old. You might not have hit lunch. Oh, is there an old, a different one? There All is right. a, a much more recent link, yes. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you, Dom. Thank you. All right. Um, and then we'll get you loaded in, and then it's it, you'll you'll be in here pretty quick. All right. Cool. Um, yes, uh, uh, I like it. Well, that's happening. Uh, what what yeah. would my faction be? Like I'm a Ooh. fremen uh, who abandoned Arrakis, but like I also still really believe in like the power of the sandworms and whatever god that I I uh, believe in. But I, I exist yeah. on uh, what do we call our planet again? Uh, I, <laughs> we have it uh, called Spice, Spice World. World. Spice <laughs> you're, you're speaking right. of Spice How World. I forget that? Uh, the Spice World. <laughs> uh, so, like, on the Spice World, I think I do try to hide myself a little bit in plain sight, but without being super obvious that I'm a Fremen, you know? Sure. Yep. That makes so a lot of sense. So, so you could put Fremen if you think it is going to be something that is, like, clear and obvious. Uh, if not, go ahead and leave it blank. You know, that's a thing we know about your character, maybe, but it's not defining. Although it feels defining. If you put it there, I'd be fine with it. It's kind of up to okay. you. <laughs> um, it sounds like you have a lot of beliefs tied to it still, so it could be important. Mm-hmm. Um, Couldn't completely separate yeah. myself from Wadib. <laughs> right, right. Who could? I've watched that movie. I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So kind of next up, once you've got that, and uh, let's see. Making sure we get everybody in here. Um, the st- <laughs> Step two. Oops. Is uh is to go ahead and try and come up with your archetype. This was our big thing that we were dealing with last time. The game is an archetype, which is a combination of a primary skill and a secondary skill. Um, 
It gives you some exciting ideas about talents that you might want to pick. It might give you a little bit of a lowdown about what kind of a character you might be. And most importantly, it actually gives you a trait. The title of the archetype you choose is one of your traits. So if I am a dualist, people know that I'm a dualist because I probably talk about it you know, within the first five minutes. So uh, it also, again, these traits are important. They let us do things. They let us say like, I'm a dualist, so I can X, Y, Z. Um, so if you're looking around, you know, pick something that seems interesting. Perfect. We got the full team in here. Um, uh, what's a, anyone, uh, let's see, archetypes. Do we have archetype thoughts? There's no place to yeah. put that on the character oh. sheet, but yes, Justin. Oh, I'm so ready. Okay. So, uh, you know, just, just we talked about it a little bit before, and 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 my my character Brad Montana, he is a uh, spacing guild agent. So you know his archetype would be spacer or or spacing guild agent essentially, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so for that, um, I believe if I'm looking at this correctly, uh, it's going to be guild agent is going to be my additional trait, which is going to give me some cool stuff. Um, and then I was actually going to go with the suggested archety archetype of strategist. Um, ah, very nice. Yeah, it's I, I've I've been reading a lot of uh, uh, sci-fi books that deal with a very particular um, admiral who's blue with red eyes, and um, and so I've just been on this whole <laughs> kick right now with weird strategy and spacing. So this this just yeah. I, I like the strategist. I think that'll be fun. Very cool. Hmm. Uh, if you're in Roll20, this they've got a list of archetypes all for you. Uh, it's under the big I up in the sidebar. Um, and you can just oh, search beautiful. archetypes, get the entire list. It'll show oh. you them one by one. It's pretty Excellent. fantastic. Um, and from in here, you'll see your trait, which you are going to add directly to your character sheets. Um, you have a primary and secondary skill, and then some focuses, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, there is a talent, and uh, we can write that under talents, but we're going to do talents kind of, well later, because <laughs> uh, there's a lot of them, and going through all of them would be a little tricky. I think there's 50? I don't know. It's like feats in D&D. We talked about that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, there's just too many to read through all of them. But, right. uh, but it, yes, go ahead. Should we, if, as we're picking skills, are we gonna, are we gonna go to person to person? I just wanna make sure I'm not getting, I'm not not doing my homework as we're progressing. Are we talking yes. more? Yes, yeah. Sorry. But I'm going to okay. chat. Let's let's real quick. Let's tell sorry, you what sorry. you're going to do with these skills, and then yeah, I'll break them down. You're uh, basically you're going to put some numbers on these skills. Let's talk about how we do this right now. Uh, while you're thinking, your primary skill in your archetype has a number six associated with it. Uh, your secondary skill has a number five, and all the rest of them are fours. <laughs> that's that's the uh, the starting position, um, and then from there Wait, you have. Can you say that sorry. one more time? My brain. Thank you. Please. You, uh, you're going to set your primary skill, whatever it is, whatever your archetype kind of suggests, um, to, uh, to a six. Um, your secondary Thank skill you. is a five, and all the rest are fours. We're looking at yeah, skills that's first. Fun. That's at the bottom of the sheet. That's kind of the, the first big thing. We figure out what we know before we start talking about like why we do the things we do. <laughs> um, okay. And so, like Cohen mentions, maybe we do want to spread out on this. You know, there's five of us. Are we all primary in different things? Are we all? Are we all like a super team? Like we're all communicators. We have a lot of choices on what we do here. Hmm. I've, I've got a question uh, yeah. around my archetype. So, I'm ready. this doctor that uh, does in fact kill. Um, do we like the idea of my being? To kind of having this cover because I'm a spy, because I'm an Ooh. infiltrator. Uh, I also thought about empath, but that's often like a Bene Gesserit kind of thing. I don't know if either of those are, if it, are any of those intruding on someone's hopes and dreams, or does one sound more interesting to anybody than the other? I'm looking at either steward or uh, steward. <laughs> steward. Right. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think I would be a steward. I was looking at Harold, but that mm, that doesn't seem quite like what I want to do. Gotcha, cool. gotcha. Yeah, cool. Okay, so it sounds like spy infiltrator. Those are both kind of open. I don't know where, where Cohen is headed with this idea, this uh, archetype concept. Uh, analyst is that what I analyst? Have in mind? Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay. Well, this is great. Well, uh, these these numbers, these six five and the three fours, right, uh -huh. for the other things. That's how we start. But then you get five points to just put in wherever you want. The highest any of these can be is eight. But if you're like my primary, I want to be so good at it. Bump that up to eight. Keep bumping up some other things. There's a if you decide my my uh, excuse me my archetype gives me battle and communication, but I actually just really want to be good at understanding. And I don't just boost that up. <laughs> Doesn't matter in the end. Um, 
where your scores end up. Uh, sorry, I I actually don't want to be a steward. <laughs> I, oh, I read, fair. I read the bottom half first, and then I read the top half, and I was like, oh, no, that's not what I want to do. Um, <laughs> I think I actually would be an envoy because it's representatives of their employers in negotiations yes. and diplomacy. Envoys are charged with traveling from place to place, conveying the will and words of their masters wherever it is required. So well-traveled, used to long journeys in rough conditions, quick-witted, quick on their feet to survive the perils of their vocation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is, that's very good. I mean, it sounds like potentially the house is is bringing you on board specifically to be this voice, right? That's a, mm -hmm. you've got, maybe you have special voice powers. <laughs> Ooh, um, I like yeah. That. Yeah, possibly. I can do a really good Doom voice. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> wow. Oh. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, let's I, see. Um, yeah, go ahead. Am I wrong in that some of these talents don't seem to, I'm not seeing all of the talents in the list of talents. Uh, is that is that uh, is anyone else having that problem? Uh, uh, let me go back hmm. archetypes. So, like, I look at like I like like my arch my talents, for instance, talents. are uh, discipline, mind place, foreknowledge, uh, and then I, I sort of I'm not seeing oh. a list of talents like foreknowledge, for instance. That is interesting. Or discipline, I, for that matter. I yeah. have a much longer list on talents than that. Um, let's see, big eye at the front. Oh uh, yeah. I, oh, you know what? I was looking. You know why? It's because I was I was looking at the. The PDF and not the Roll Twenty. Ah. Maybe it's there. Uh, Roll Twenty is making today a lot easier. I'm pretty happy that we've got it. Honestly, nice yes. work, Roll Twenty. Good work, Modifius. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. It's nice. I like being able to click on everything. And, uh, yes. It. Just read what mm -hmm. everything is. Um, so yeah, uh, the biggest thing that we've got after that, right? Our archetype also tells us a lot about our, our focuses. And focuses are things that we are very good at. Um, when, you, when you take these focuses, you are going to be succeeding at a ridiculous rate. These are things that you are, you are the best at. Um, basically, the way the game works is whenever you roll a d20, um, every time you roll a natural one, it's a critical success. You get two successes. Uh, if you roll under the target number, which we'll chat about, you get one success, and over is none. Uh, 20 is a complication. If you are focused in something, as long as you beat your target number, you always get two successes. So it's a way to really like, hugely increase the, uh, the ways you can succeed at things. Um, so whenever you pick these, you want to pick things that are going to come up, you know, uh, which is why they give you these two uh, based on your archetype. So I know that, for example, um, where was I just at? If we're looking at our envoy here, right? Two potential focuses. Diplomacy is going to be a focus of your communication skill. Um, and so is persuasion, right? Um, you've got both of those. Anytime you're trying to do those two things, you will be wildly successful at them. Nice. Yes, indeed. And you get four focuses. So even though your archetype gives you two, the other two are up to you. Um, I went ahead and made a character myself. Um, make kind of a duelist style. And while I took dueling and short blades, because that's what duelist gives you, um, I actually wanted grace as a movement option. I'm just I'm just quick on my feet. Um, and then for communication, I took gossip because, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk to everybody. <laughs> so, so picking those two gives you kind of that breadth of things that you are very good at. And whenever you are kind of doing your character stuff, um, Focusing those would be good. Um, all the points into sandworm ranching, right? Yep. Um, pro probably a new style of focus, but uh, could definitely be one. <laughs> uh, I think one of the move options is actually like the uh, the Fremen sandworm riding whole deal. So sandworm ranching. Wow. Seems reasonable. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why not? Absolutely. <laughs> so um, any questions on skills and focuses? First, first half of our character, honestly. Is there a <laughs> list of focuses somewhere? Good question. There is in the book, and there's so many of them. Um, on roll 20, um, I believe that's going to be a little bit harder to find. Let's see if I can get it for you um, while we're here chatting. Who else is uh, thinking about something intriguing for their characters while I'm looking at this? Uh, well, I do. I did. I, I looked at some of the other um, character sheets in the book, and I did see that one of the focuses for move uh, mm -hmm. can be dance. So clearly, I got some oh. moves. Mm, Very nice. Heck yeah. What a, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> what page we got focuses on? Sorry. Uh, I was just trying to look it up myself. Uh, here we go. I'm going to show a thing to players. Let's see if we get that. Oh, the please. measure of a character might have Thank shown you. up. 
Check yep. that out. Yep. <laughs> the long oh, there list. we go. Okay. Roll 20, solving your problem since earlier today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Perfect. here we go. Yes, thank you. All right. So oh I love this. So many focuses, and they can be they can be broad, right? They're ways to fill out your character. Uh -huh. um, but we also have to talk about drives, which is the second major thing about your character, um, the other big choice that you have to make. Let's see. Um, here's how drives work. Are you ready? You get the numbers eight, seven, six, five, and four to put in those five spots. Um, and we talked a little bit about this last time. Your your drives, everything you do in the game, you know, you have your skills, but you also need to have a reason why you're using those skills. And so at any point you might be saying, well, I'm going to go ahead and use my battle skill because I want power. I might use my understand skill and I'm gonna use my duty because that's, I need to understand this. My house needs me to understand it or something like that. Um, and we're gonna put those numbers together basically to create our target numbers for the game. So if you are really, really good at understand and really, really good at duty, put those together, you've got a 16 on 2d20 as you're trying to roll underneath or a 16 or less, uh, pretty good odds of success there. So. Hmm. And um, you said the numbers are what? Eight, six, seven. Eight, seven, six, five, four. And how many, how many extra points do we have on skills? Rich? On skills, you have five points. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Oh, thank you. That was the extra info I needed. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. So you get to mess with, around um, with those. And has also, anybody? Yeah. B, go ahead. Oh, I'm just wondering. Now I'm like looking like deep into battle focuses. So like what kind of battle focuses are y'all thinking? Like I'm looking at assassination, but I don't know if that feels right. I just think like that or dirty fighting because I'm also a smuggler. I, I, uh, yeah, I was, I, I was kind of uh, thinking the smuggler route. So yeah, I think if a couple of us had dirty fighting and that's kind of what I was up eyeballing as well, it would be <laughs> hilarious. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, if there's something that's like can anticipate, like anticipation, just um, in hmm. like sneak attacks. Uh, there is uh, sneak attacks. attacks. Oh, there evasive is evasive action. Yeah. Evasive action. Yeah. Here, let me take a look at the book. Yeah. Right. So those are all very good. And if one of them doesn't like fit perfectly, if you want to come up with your own that are in these type of, kind of categories, um, not really a big big problem with that. Okay. Oh, so it just can't little, can't be too malleable. broad. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no um, way we can have every way to communicate or discipline, but. We try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the character sheet is roll our archetype. Check it out, my thing. Roll is actually your role in the game. Like, uh, so if you are uh, a house heir, maybe, maybe you have a title there, maybe you have a specific position. If you are the um, the house's uh, one and only gardener and sandworm specialist, um, maybe that's your role. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> kind of a way to put go... your character in a single single phrase. I'm going to say the house master of health and nutrients. Ooh, and nutrients. <laughs> what nutrients? <laughs> what an <laughs> ominous <Mara>. title. Oh. <laughs> Take Be. this. It is a nutrient. Oh, you, did, you did see Worm Rider, right? Or is that one you automatically get? Because that's pretty awesome. What? Where? Yeah. Where is that? Yeah, Worm Exam Rider. Example of move, move focuses. <gasps> Right. Because I'm really good at move in my smuggling says to take piloting, but like pff, I'm taking worm rider. Oh my word. Oh my word. You spent, you you spent all out. your time riding worms back oh, in the man. day. Can't help that back focus, home. you know. <laughs> Very nice. Um would martial arts be a good focus for our uh yeah, I mean martial arts itself is pretty good, right? Yeah. Um if we take a look at the example battle focuses, uh, we have unarmed combat in here, so that would just be a, a variation. I mean, dirty fighting. Uh, you know. We've got also like short blades in here, shield fighting. If that's your whole deal, is just using shields. Um, hmm. It's also strategy as a battle focus if you want to take it war, more of like a war master style hmm. approach. So lots and lots of options. But again, if you mm -hmm. just wanted to in the game, if you wanted to say my well, my battle focus is martial arts, and I have a specific style. There you go. Okay. That'll work as well. I do love this game for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this measure of a character page will will be very helpful for our next bit too, where we're talking a little bit about drives. Um, Ooh. Goes into the the five drives of the game are duty, faith, justice, power, and truth. Um, 
And uh, the eight means you really care about that one. That's what your character focuses on quite a bit. A four kind of means I don't really care about this. Um, if I do something and, and that is guiding my way, I'm not going to do very well at it. Um, so, so I like having these. They're pretty good uh, because they're kind of personal. If all of you are like, we are all faith-based characters, you know, that's okay because you're broad in skills. And so um, that's a kind of an interesting way for you to show what your house does, you know, be, be very like, you know, uh, what did we talk about last time? The cult of Yelp, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they might all be motivated by truth. We will find the truth or else. Um, it should be very fun. How, how many, sorry, circling back, how many focuses are we are we meant to take? Or is it you will five? have four. Two of them okay. from your archetype, and then two that you get to choose. You can choose them now, or you can choose them later. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Um, so has anyone chosen their drives? Has anyone gotten to that point? I've got, like, some loose ones, but, like, incidentally, I did my drives first, and then I did my skills, and now <laughs> that I have an idea of my skills, it's going to yeah. redo some of my drives, but I have all my Absolutely. skills done. Yeah, um, feel free. So I am the world's, the you, galaxy, universe, I am the best worm rider there has ever been. Um, <laughs> I excel at unarmed combat. Um Decent at bartering. Uh, I'm nice. a smuggler. You know, it's one of those skills you gotta have. I'm very good at botany, and I have a bit of resolve. You know, yeah. I can I can endure. I like it. Very nice. All right. Very cool. And I see on your sheet you've got. We haven't talked drive statements yet, but we will pretty quick. Um, so I'm excited to see those in there already. <laughs> yeah, I gotta see if anything's gonna change now that I know my character a little bit more. Right. Right. Um, Ah, oh, Dune. I'm so glad folks are here in the chat watching along. If you've got questions about, about the game while we're making these characters, let us know. I know we're not, I mean, we're looking at talent lists and focus lists. If you want to hear some of those things, let us know. Yeah. And yeah. just for, for the chat, Rich, uh, yeah. if there's anyone who wrote down both five and four on a piece of paper, uh, one more time, how many more skill points do we have? This is the kind of thing I, I come back to over and over. I'm sorry. Gotcha, gotcha. Your your skills begin at six five four four four, and you have five points to spend between. Them. Okay. Maximum eight. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> Should I oh. take an eight in Worm Rider? Am I ever gonna get to ride worms? Is this like, or am I just being aspirational? Wow, wow. Uh, that is definitely an aspiration to be able to get back to uh, to worm riding. I love it as a focus. It's really, really good. Um, <laughs> And maybe, you know, your your aid is in moving, so that translates to lots of different things. But when a worm shows up, that's when it kicks in. Um, mm -hmm. You get those super successes. Having an eight and a skill is awesome. <laughs> okay, I'm going to think about that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did see a danger sense. I know Elisa was asking about something to, oh, to be right. pre-warned about danger. There is a danger ah. sense under understand. That one looks uh, pretty in line with what you were talking about. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. Under understand. Under understanding. Interesting. Right. These are pretty broad categories. So so definitely yeah. we're gonna see things where you don't expect them. Uh Canley um is the knowledge of the accepted forms of vendetta, which is like the art of assassination is an understand skill. But assassination is of course a battle spell or skill, excuse me, even though it's kind of like a ranged mm -hmm. combat thing usually. Mm -hmm. We we might expect them to have some composure, be a, a disciplined character, but it's a lot of different focuses that might build up to the thing you do. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm Make thinking <laughs> through the drives and I found something in the book that is kind of cool I'm ready. about picking a drive. So it says one way to choose drives. This is on page. Oh, I don't see the page number. Oh, 121 in the yes. book. It says one way to choose drives is to compare each individual drive against the others, weighing which of two drives is most important to the character. So you just kind of like narrow it down by saying, is my character more interested in duty or faith? Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, uh, duty. And then, well, duty or justice? Uh, justice. And then justice or power? Uh, still justice. So you kind of just like narrow it down that way. Yeah. That's oh, nice. interesting. I really like that a lot. Hopefully it's not a big circle, right? That's what you want to avoid. But, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I do really like that because it, it's going to be clear when you're thinking about your character that one of them is probably the one you care about the least. I mean, it's mm -hmm. hard to say the five are not unimportant, right? right. <laughs> That's what I'm struggling with because it's like I don't um, – mm -hmm. maybe I don't have a clear enough uh, vision of my character, but I'm, I'm having trouble 
deciding which one is the most important. If I go by what it says for Envoy, it would be duty as the top one, and then maybe justice. But it really just depends on how you build the character, I think. True. And let's let's see if I can chat about these a little bit while we're, we're thinking about it. Um, let's see. The book, when it goes through these, talks about duty is the pressure upon a character to find your place in society and fulfill your role, right? But also has to do with the weight of obligations, personal responsibilities, um, all tucked in there. Mm -hmm. um, and just for the record, that's kind of what duty is about. <laughs> um, use duty to when right. it's your responsibility to get the job done. When others are counting on your character to succeed, has to be maybe your house, people under your command, right? All duty. However, as we are going to see in a moment, as we start talking about drive statements, your statement can totally rewrite how you approach duty, even though it's your most important thing. You, your most important thing might be more of like a chaotic good sort of thing. Like, I don't have duty to no one. That's my most important thing about me. And so I have an eight, but I have this like almost anti-duty framework mm. for how I act. Um, mm -hmm. these, uh, these high level duty, or excuse me, drives that we pick, we we're going to write these drive statements for three of them, the highest three. And anytime we use them, if they're not in accordance with that statement, stuff happens. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So when you're thinking about like, I want, you know, whatever my highest one is, you're going to come up with a statement that kind of defines how your character approaches that drive. So wow. that's going to be a big thing. Yeah, this is interesting because like I'm very familiar with the Star Trek Adventures version of the D20 uh -huh. system. Yeah. And so it's kind of like they, they took the values and they this is instead what the values are, like the drive statement right. is the values. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Having played like STA a lot, uh -huh. I'm also seeing the similarities, <laughs> but it's different. Yeah. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're doing cool. a good but job the focus with that. Is, like, that remains the same. So I appreciate that. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, the talents is there. That's the same. Um, mm -hmm. We've got like determination, and there's probably what's the other one? Threat. Threat. Threat yep. and momentum. Yep. <laughs> yeah, threat and momentum. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. Still got yeah. the so a lot of similarities. Good, good. Cool. Um, okay, let's can see. I can I actually talk through? Because I'm it's starting to form a little bit for my character. Um, yeah. I so the part of me that's in this character is the fact that I actually do like to make connections and make things happen. I like to wheel and deal and connect people and projects and, and collaborations. So I think that's what I'm going to put of myself into this character. Like that's her driving force too. She likes to make connections. Nice. She just likes to make projects happen. And um, yeah, uh, so I'm not sure which one that is. <laughs> Power maybe? Is could be power? power. Power doesn't need to be strength at all. It can be, you know, I want my house to be as powerful as possible is a, is a great mm -hmm. statement for that sort of thing. Yeah, and, and bringing if you're, in the right people yeah. and entities can bring mm -hmm. power. Absolutely. Or build power. Okay. All right. That feels right. Yeah. That is okay. pretty reasonable. All right. I think um, it's power. that's my highest one then. Power. Nice. Yes. The power, the pursuit of greater influence, authority, or control over the universe around them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's also me. Just kidding. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> that's excellent. Uh, we're, we've got some good questions in the chat, by the way. There was, is the martial arts like hand-to-hand -hand or more aligned with strategy? Again, because you can kind of come up with your own version. Um, one of the big things about this, about Dune is it's a galaxy. I know the books are kind of about three houses and that's about it, but there's who the heck knows how many more. So if your planet is focused on a martial arts style that is entirely like, I guess, like Aikido based, you are, you are defensive until you strike or, or whatever else, that's all that stuff is totally possible and you can build, you know, just anything you want. Um, let's see, is anyone taking poison for a focus came from the chat? <laughs> uh, I wanted to. Uh, yeah, don't we have, isn't our doctor uh, a poison expert too? Wow. Um... That is pretty cool. I need to consider that. <laughs> <laughs> so that is that is what the poison is a. Yeah, which one is that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it is understand. I think it's oh, understand. Um, yeah. oh, that I would don't be have a six and understand. Oh, so for, for focuses. Focuses you can put in anything you want. Oh, oh but they, they are not above. side. You have. Uh, that is for your drives. Okay. We'll chat about. Let me double check that, but I'm pretty sure that's true. I think you can put them anywhere. And we get how many focuses? You get four. 
Okay. But what if I want five? Well, uh, uh, we could level up at some point. <laughs> Goal to level up. To level up. Yes, to gain mm -hmm. some development points and uh, and use those as you see fit. Um, let's see. Yes, uh, the focuses do not need to be attached to the highest skills a character has. They may be used with any skill. Okay, oh. Cool. Oh, that's cool. So, so if like you want them could all be battle. Uh, you, right then we would be kind of into the assassination style. But if you were asking like, how do I make a poison? That feels more like an understand check than a battle check. So, mm -hmm. right. But if you were like, I'm going to okay. poison that person right there, right now. Yeah, battle, battle. <laughs> that would make a lot of sense. It's kind of how you approach it. Again, does poison count as a nutrient? I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if, if you have to ask, you're not healthy enough. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Sugar free poisons. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, what else do we got? So we're uh we're we're still working on focuses for sure, absolutely. Um I'm curious about drives. So we're kind of in the middle. Anyone I've, else have a primary drive in mind? I've thrown some in there. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I keep jumping back and forth between power and duty. Ah, uh, very nice. Uh, I'm going to jump in and take a look at the good doctor here. Oh, who has a f list of drives and drive statements already in place? Very nice. Hey. Yeah, so what, I'm, I'm thinking that, uh, you know, spoilers, uh, my thought is that all of these schools have erred in the side of sort of creating control mechanisms to, to mm -hmm. keep everybody serving the purpose of sort of the people behind the screen. Right. And that this this should be eliminated, right? So the Sook doctors should not have imperial conditioning. Um, they should have greater freedom to, to make decisions and choose. And so uh, my goal long term would be to create my own school uh, mm. from with the funding and backing of the House of Posh. Right. Wow. So a lot of it's built around that. I like this. You've, you've already gone in and filled in your ambition, which is one of the final steps is a excuse me, an ambition based on your, your primary drive, hopefully. And that makes a lot of sense. Um, let's see, uh, looking at drive statements, just to, just to make sure we got them down, right? Yeah. Um, I love your one for justice, right? The scales of balance require those who will adjust the scales. That's what you do. Um, oh. if, you, if you can say that's why you are doing a thing, right? Gotcha. Uh, then justice is great. You've got it. You can use that uh, to do a task. Um, Truth, how did Dr. S uh, Dr. Suk manage to create a powerful school? I love that as a question. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to apply yeah. it in situations, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's good. Okay, so yeah, let me think on that. Uh, that's great. There are Thank some, you. oh, of course. Um, if you're on that measure of a character, you can scroll down below the drives and there are a lot of sample drive statements. So for things mm -hmm. in here, like they have a couple of these, I'll look at truth since we were just there. Um, yeah. I decide what is true. It's a great truth statement. Um, <laughs> I seek to uncover the many secrets of the universe. It's broad enough that it could be applicable in a lot of ways. So maybe taking this, you know, maybe um, you are trying to, trying to search for like the underpinnings of authority, maybe something like, something that describes what you mean there without getting so specific, I think could apply in more ways. Yeah. Um, maybe the secrets that make organizations function. Yeah. I like that, right? Because then now suddenly you see a different organization. You're walking around like, what's up with that House Harkonnen over there? I'm going to use my truth drive like, because I want to find the secrets of that organization. That makes a lot of sense. Um, truth is the first casualty of war. You will know me by my deeds. Oh, my goodness. These are dark. I love That's them. That's powerful. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was brutal. <laughs> Sweet. Um, my goodness. These are very fun. Um, so the way that it is going to work as we are playing the game is if you have a drive statement and you use that drive um, and we both look at it and go, yeah, you're following your drive, then everything's great. But if you're not, if you want to use power and your power drive feels different than what we're doing at the moment, it doesn't fit the context, uh, then I get to challenge your drive, um, your statements. Um, you can either accept that and then erase your drive statement and you have to come up with a new one later on. Um, or... Uh, I gained some stuff. <laughs> cool. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Which is very fun. So your drive statements are really going to be what your character is kind of focused on. And if you end up in a, in a state where, you know, you're acting against your own interests, maybe you don't think your character would act that way. 
the game kind of tells you not to do that. <laughs> or if you do, at least I get some bonuses. <laughs> nice. Which is very fun. Um, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. All right. I'm struggling with my last drive, so I redid some of mine. So for duty, um, also, I realized I used the wrong word earlier to describe uh, sad worms and like the one god is Shai Halud. Um, so my faith, which is my number one, is Shai Halud is the one god because I worship the thing that made the everything. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, I've never played a zealot in my life, so this is going to be an experience, <laughs> <laughs> honestly. Uh, justice, mm -hmm. what we do will return to us. And I don't, I feel like I need something harsher than just like what comes around goes around, but I don't know gotcha. what would feel more zealot like. Got it. Um, like, well, let's, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Shai Halud will strike you down. Like, I don't even remember. <laughs> right, right. I hear you. Um, I will say that on this one, the way you've got your drive set up right now, uh, Justice is your five and Duty is your four. So you don't actually need drive statements for those two. Those oh, you can fabulous. do kind of all the time. Those are kind of like your uh, Justice, you know, <laughs> it's someone oh, else can deal with that. <laughs> cool. Cool. Right. It's just okay. not a thing that propels you into action, uh, you know. Whereas faith, that actually makes a lot of sense. You know, you could be, you could be down and and building, you know, a new environment for your 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 small sandworm, right? And the, you're doing it, and you're using your your understand maybe to uh, to create this perfect environment, and you're using your faith to make that happen, right? That mm -hmm. combination makes a lot of sense in in how you decide to act. So I like that. I like it. Um, then in truth, I have what we do not know is not meant for us. That just seems like classic. Uh... <laughs> You know what I mean. Right. <laughs> I, I'm going to keep myself in a certain measure of ignorance in order to mm -hmm. ensure that my belief makes the most sense. Um, but what, like, what is my, I want power to be my last one, but like, how do those Ooh. two things reflect power? Also, I'm a smuggler, so that has to be. <laughs> That's a very good point. Um, and And I, I will say that the book mentions this specifically, is when you're coming up with these drive statements, you, you don't need to worry too much about if they contradict each other because people are contradictory. That's just what okay. we do. And so they kind of let it go. And, you know, in the nature of play, you know, oh, my gosh, I'm going to use my, my power. I want to use my power to do this, but my truth makes more sense because... Ah, uh, but I want to use power. You know, um, you might mm -hmm. face a situation where you have to change one of your drives because you're, you know, you're up against your own interpersonal conflict. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which they say is cool. You know, the big part of uh, of how the game should work. I like it. Um, I look forward to that. Uh, I'm I'm excited. Uh, yeah, I have a question about focuses. Um, yes. So you said we could kind of slot them wherever. Yeah. One of my assigned focuses is Canley. And when we were talking about this a little bit. Um, and I, I purposely want to put it someplace I'm bad at. Is that okay? Like, of I course. want to put it like in battle, which is my lowest. Sure. Uh, all right, perfect. Um, so, I, right, go ahead. Oh yeah, and then I think I have my statements. Like I, you know, the idea is like, he kind of bumbles around Canley, but he tries to do it. Mm -hmm. But when he does it, he does really well. But yeah. most of the time he kind of fails, is, is just my <laughs> idea. Right. But, and that's gotten him into sticky situations and I kind of enjoy, enjoy that idea. I mean, I will totally say so. So let's let's talk mechanics, right? Um, yeah. Let's say that you and I'm looking at uh, <laughs> Agent Brad Montana right now, right? Yeah. Um, you were using your duty, right? You were acting out of a sense of duty to the house, and you were using Canley to do it, right? Mm -hmm. um, that makes a lot of sense. I serve the guild, but belong to the House of Posh. Guy Fieri Spice tells you, like, go off that person over there. Let's move. Um, what you would get is two d20s, and you have a total score of seven plus four is eleven. Oh, right. You, you roll 2d20, you're trying to get an 11 or less. And for you, because you are focused in Canley, any success is going to be doubled. You'll get two awesome. successes. We're trying to make as many successes as we can. Great. I love it. So having it in a four is not really a huge problem if you tie it to a drive that matters. Right. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> if you're running around like assassinating for justice, you are going to be bad at that. I mean, yeah, you've got exactly, you've got and, an it, and it's lined up perfectly for that, <laughs> yeah, right? I'm assassinating exactly. for justice. No, and you get an eight. I mean, that's not terrible, yeah. still. Um, and then yeah. for my uh, for my statements, for my drive statements, I you know you already said my duty one, uh, mm -hmm. which is I served a guild but belonged to the House of Posh. Absolutely. Uh, faith for I I went with uh, this too. I will survive. And I like then, that. Uh, uh, for power, I deserve to have everything I want. So good. That's yeah. wow. That's very <laughs> smuggler esque. That's good. Yes. 
I really like that. I think those sound fun. And this too, I will survive is really cool because that's uh, broad enough to be used in so many different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Which which I think is very good. That's kind of what we want. We want something that, um, <laughs> or something that maybe I could potentially use against you. Like, what if you're not surviving this? Can I use your drive to uh, get you into yeah. trouble or something? Who knows? <laughs> right. I love it. I like it. All right. So very good. So that was taking a look at Agent Brad Montana. Um, I see that you've also got your talents laid out here, which is perfect going through those. Um, talents, like I said, there's tons of them. You get one because of your archetype, and you get to choose two more of any of them that you want. And they all do different things, and they all do strange things. Um, like, for example, you've chosen Master at Arms, right? Uh, your expertise in battle is considerable and few can match your effectiveness in combat. At the start of a dual skirmish or battle scene, you select one of your like melee weapons or a unit of troops, either one, um, and you can just make it better for the scene. Um, you just like amp up your troops. You go, let's go. Um, you gain a better quality version of troops for the scene or something like that. So I like it. And we're not going to go through all those things because there's too many. <laughs> um, <laughs> But let's see, anyone else drives? How are we on drives? I have two written and I'm working on the third. Excellent. So I got it. Oh, wow. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I got it. Sorry. Oh yeah, should I read mine or? I'm ready, yeah, go, go for it. Okay. And then we'll get going. <laughs> the power is eight and the statement is, one gathers power by putting together the strongest allies. Nice. And then duty is seven. I must always move in the best interest of my house. And then wow. faith is six, so I—that's the one I'm. That's I the other one. Yet. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I like I wrote. I think for one of mine was I believe in the power of positive thinking. Um, you know, you could you could do like almost anything you wanted for these. Again, it's just it's just how does it going to come up in the game? So. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. It definitely rewards a character who chooses to be high in faith, but doesn't want to do a huge like religious style faith. Although I'll mention Dune is written with religion like square in the center of it, but mm -hmm. <laughs> we do not have to. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't feel like my character, yes, she's Benny Desert, but I don't think she's super religious. I think she's just more so about the discipline and, mm -hmm. and the ceremony of it. Right. And which makes a lot of sense. So that's a, that's a very reasonable way to to approach faith for that style of character. Yeah. So, so I just wrote in for faith. If I put in the effort, it has every chance of working out. <laughs> very nice. Uh, I like that. I like that's that. great. I'm. I feel like I need to remember that every day. I mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Very cool. Um, let's see. So over here we have our twisted men's hat silently toiling away. Tell me about this character. Where are you headed so, going? <laughs> I think I misunderstood. So only we should only have three three drive statements. Top three, yeah, just for your top okay. three. Okay, I'm gonna mm -hmm. take a take get rid of those. Although I like your faith one. I know what I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I had for I had duty, knowledge of one's position is an absence of uncertainty. But uh, truth, of which I've said at eight, is I will either find the truth or make it. Uh, power the weakness of my enemies is an inspiration <laughs> and justice some scales need tipping very good this is sounding um, amazing <laughs> yeah I, i'm definitely developing a, a much more malevolent personality out of these than i had originally intended <laughs> this always happens to me i'm like i'm not gonna play a villain this time and it just mm -hmm. sneaks up on me Right, it you know, I, I feel like in the the Dune universe, there's there's everybody, and then there's the Harkonnens. Like they've already given us given us this over the top ridiculous stance on villainy. So everything we do is fine because we're not floating around drinking the blood of our you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, like people hunt, with a hunting, zipper, hunt, heart zipper, hunting people <laughs> from like from like a battle mechs through the forest who have been bred right. to be hunted. Yeah, it's just. You, those later books like really start like like filling in some of the gaps too. It's just mwah, it's just woof. <laughs> Very it's, nice. it's horrible, but uh, you know, they just they just like their villains. It, it's useful. It's useful. Yeah, ethically to have like a uh, an absolute zero. Very true. Very true. All right. Uh, let's see. It sounds like we're doing great on drives and drive statements. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so cool, cool, cool. So let's see. Uh, let's jump on to uh, to the next phase here. 
in our character building. And again, if we need to go back, we, we're, we've got plenty of time. From there, you might have a reasonable idea about what your ambition is. And in general, this is a short phrase defined by your highest rated drive right now. Um, this is something that you might accomplish. It might be something that you're like, eh, never mind. It's not going to be my ambition anymore. Um, it doesn't have to be public. It can be, you know, kind of secret. You know, Teos, you do not need to go around telling everybody you know, going to form your own secret medical school without those darn traditions. <laughs> yep. uh, but Inside uh, voice. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but that's at least where we're going to start with that. Um, um, so let's see. I think for <laughs> for my duelist character, um, I wrote as my ambition, I want the head chef. I want Guy Fieri to bless my chef knives. Like I want, I want <laughs> Guy to say, you're a good duelist. Good work. Um, which is silly, but also like a high honor probably for a duelist is to have those kind of, maybe my blades become a higher quality or something at some point. Like that's something I want to invest <laughs> my life in. Um, we'll talk assets in a moment, but. Your characters feel like they have, I mean, you've built ambitions into them. I already know. It's just, do you have them in a sentence form yet? <laughs> uh, let's, let's see. I'm poking around here on, uh, on roll 20. Uh, B, what do you think your character? I mean, I feel like you're going a direction here, but you don't have to go yeah. that direction. <laughs> well, I've got two things on my brain, either to become like, I really just want to import a bunch of sandworms to Spice World and start my own sandworm farm. Yeah. Or, or open up a church of Shai Halud and convert the locals to believing in sandworms and the one true God. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. You haven't read the Dune books? Because <laughs> you, are, you are nailing it. <laughs> read them a long time ago. Okay. Wow. <laughs> it's all coming back, though, you know? Yeah. <laughs> my goodness. I think I... Sandworm Farm is more my, my own speed, though. I, okay. I struggle with okay. the whole megachurch idea. Sure, sure. One may certainly lead to the other. I mean, I feel like <laughs> both of those goals might happen in this character's future. It's kind of just where you're headed first. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Sounds good. Um, anyone else? I think my ambition is looking at, like, make Spice World the most dominant something. Like, trade okay. market planet. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. Right? Okay. I like Not that because... Sure. Um, I mean, trademark, there's so many good things to, to put in there, right? Is it about the frozen food empire? Is that your focus? Is it is it the entertainment business? Is either one of those two? Or is it just the house in general? Is it the, the house, house going to become I, powerful? Okay. Yeah, maybe it's the house. Make make the house of Posh the most dominant house, I guess. I mean, it could be even make the house of Posh a great house, right? You're a major house right now. Ah, That's true. Uh-huh. Yeah, but gain the em emperor's favor. There's a lot of ways you could take that one. Like, mm -hmm. can it be something just simple? Like, I want to retire wealthy, happy, and whole. Sure, done. <laughs> so nice. Right? <laughs> Mine is like a lot. <laughs> Yours is just lovely. <laughs> just boom. So, but I like that it's it's also very personal, right? It's it's yeah. not big and broad. Yeah. It's just about you. Like that's that's now a thing we know about. Uh, sorry, Agent Brad Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, and let's see, like we already talked about Teos. Is, are you keeping yours the same? Establishing yeah, your school? Think, yep, I think so. Gotcha, gotcha. Very cool. All right. And uh, let's see, I, I'm not sure. I think I missed Cohen. Um, uh, yes, sorry. This is for ambition. Yeah. Do you ha what do you think your character wants to accomplish in the near future? <sighs> Okay. Uh, find a find a purpose for these talents beyond serving House Posh. Oh, very interesting. Uh, wow. And uh, sorry, uh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just letting us know right now. <laughs> uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, right? I mean, potentially you want to. You're using the House of Posh. You know, it's not a necessarily a family relation right it's not you know it's not quite noble houses maybe you're trying to get into the imperial surface you know maybe you're trying to find a house that will appreciate your talents a little bit more you're just honing your skills there you, you know go. What? I, I'm, gonna, to take that. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna sum it up as find the best possible future for myself. I like it. I like uh, it. Just gonna for you. Yeah. Right? Like and if you just yeah, there's not a, there's not a lot to this character beyond like there's not a lot to the hell is my character's name? Uh, Drohai. Yeah, there's not a lot to Drohai beyond <laughs> beyond. Okay, I have these create. I have these skills. I know what everybody is expecting. Kind, but gotcha. you know the thing. The problem with building like a computer without giving it any ethics is it's going to very quickly do the universal paper clips thing of like, well, how do I make this work for me? Like, why why mm -hmm. why am I serving you? <laughs> Absolutely. Well. Then it sounds like for the most part, we have our characters um, done in in their kind of like character-esque form. I mean, like I said, we're going to do talents, but the other thing we really need is assets. And then we'll do our final wrap up for folks. Um, assets are things that your character has access to. Um, can you find a knife at most any time? Probably. But uh, the knife that you have, if you were a knife carrier, might be important for some reason. Maybe it was a gift. Maybe it was something you rely on, right? Um, there are, if you have something as an asset, you can use it almost immediately at any time. Uh, but there are also ways to generate assets during a scene. Um, so you can use, uh, use uh, excuse me, determination for that, among other things. So if you need a, a weapon and you don't have one to hand, I mean, the first thing you do is you find a weapon instead of, well, I have a dagger, so now I'm going to fight, um, uh, which is a big deal in the game. Um, you must, of your assets, you're going to have three of them. And if you take a look at roll 20, uh, they have done us a great service and given us an entire list of assets. Oh my gosh. It's, wow. uh, it's under that little eye, <laughs> that information eye. There's a whole sidebar filled with them. And what you're going to notice immediately is they don't seem like physical items. <laughs> so a lot of them do. But, uh, you know, one of them is Confidant of the Emperor. Uh, doesn't seem like a regular asset that you would have, but... Um, you can get information uh, that few others can, right? There, there's some risks there. Who knows? Um, you could get executed for displeasing the emperor. Um, maybe you have an old friend who can give you some important information down the road. Um, maybe you have blackmail information that we will define further later in our adventures. <laughs> um, or could get at any time, you know? Um, so there's a lot of these that are, are really cool. And you can basically, during the game, just say, well, OK, we are wherever we are on whatever planet, whatever city. But one of my assets is an old friend. And I'm going to go ahead and define that old friend as, uh, oh, gosh, darn it, uh, Jimmy Nebraska right over there. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to go find someone who can tell me what I need to know here in town. I have an old friend around here, which I like a lot. Um, certainly, there are blades on here, important stuff. There are Chris knives. Um, if you are, you know, getting a, a whole fancy blade there from the Fremen, um, a little more sacred than normal. Hmm. Up to you. But there's there's stuff in here that's pretty interesting. Like, uh, uh, let's see, we have survivalist outfits like the Juba cloak. We've got still suits. We have ornithopters. You know, if you want a personal transport, you can totally have that. Um, if one of your assets is that, uh, you know, you you think you want to be the Mentat Master of Assassins, um, or maybe you want to know them, <laughs> those are assets that you could have on board. Um, so your next job is to pick three of these that could be interesting. And for our purposes, um, if we were doing a longer form campaign, potentially that you could choose some of these totally wild ones, like, yeah, um, I am like the Emperor's assassin. That's one of my assets. That's my childhood friend. Um, <laughs> um, here we might want to stick with some of the, the smaller personal things that you could see kind of holding on to in like a backpack uh, or with you, um, maybe in a, a small group of folks, potentially. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you're saying you know, I, can't, I can't have an elite troop. You, yes, yes. Uh, let's go ahead and say that for this game. Um, but that is an asset. So, you know, if you were running around and you had an elite troop and you could be like, I, you know, I, I make this, I tell everybody in town that there's a curfew now and I can do that because I have an elite troop right here. <laughs> That's a thing you could do. <laughs> awesome. I'm right. Ready. You could also do that because list. you are very authoritative. Right. Um, so it's how full do of we... lore too, which is so cool. Yes. Yeah, they're from all over the place. Sorry, go ahead, B. Sorry. Uh, no, how no. do we determine the quality of our assets? So they are going to start at a quality of zero. Um, 
which is okay. although your sandworm is a quality one because that's ridiculous. That's <laughs> thank you. Of course, <laughs> spicy um, poops is quality. Right. <laughs> Generally, quality is is going to give you additional bonuses. They give you a little bit of an edge in your checks. Um, especially on a, like what we call an extended task. Uh, if you were trying to complete something that seems like it would take a long time, uh, the better your gear is, the higher quality, the easier it is to complete those tasks. So for us, we can go ahead and leave them at a zero if we are able to get some personalized stuff that would come up and, and do things that were a little bit better. Um, one of the ones, for example, is if you had a quality one blade, right? And you were attacking like kind of a major opponent, um, you would do one more damage. I'll put damage in quotes because that's not quite how this game works. <laughs> but we'll get there. Uh, um, sorry, go ahead. Yep. Uh, so far, I've chosen X Agent as an asset because nice. I already knew I wanted to have like contacts as an asset, and it seems like X Agent is the best way to do that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I like that a lot. So you may be able to, you know, even if you don't see that agent around here, get information to them or from them. You know, things like. Um, is there any way since I'm going here, I could have contacted my ex agent to send me an update, you know, wherever I end up, you know, so we could do stuff like that for sure. A little flashbacky, which mm -hmm. I like. Cool. Cool. Um, the biggest rule is the one of yours must be physical. You cannot just mm -hmm. have ephemeral, ephemeral, there we go, assets. Um, and we get something three, right? We get, we get three. three. Assets. And it is, like I said, you can build more during a scene. Specifically, you can be in this scene. Uh, I don't have a weapon, but it sounds scary. I'm going to grab this wrench. I have a quality zero wrench. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that stuff is fine. And it, sorry, can, if you might have already explained this, but the quality, what is? how do we determine the quality number? It's going to be zero across the board. Oh, OK. Does that ever change? It does. If you get better versions of them, it's, it's oh, kind of like okay. it, it gives us an opportunity to develop our characters or to level up a little bit. Got is, it. Okay. is by by increasing the quality of our assets. Cool. So if you, you get some going, yeah. I was going to ask if you can use assets in conjunction with each other. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, how so? Well, uh, not to give too much away, but if if there were say <laughs> a means of delivering poison and a poison, for instance. Uh, uh huh. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> just throwing that out there. Yeah. Completely. So uh, you, <laughs> you could get a higher quality of either one of those potentially. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. Uh, I will tell you that, th like Teos was mentioning earlier, there's some really cool lore in here for sure. You can kind of see it uh, when you click on these and read them. Um, make sure you notice that if your character wants to run around with a personal shield, right, something that would block laser fire and create an atomic explosion, and then uh, probably get the emperor out here to uh, to yell at somebody. Um, uh -huh. You need to be aware that that sort of thing can attract sandworms if you're in a dangerous place with like sandworms. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Always. So, I, Always. I love those fun. additions to this, yes. Um, also note, uh, some of these kind of talk a little bit more. They feel more like a house asset than a personal asset. Um, so I'm yeah, trying to think of one. Yeah, it seems quick. like it'd be a lot for me to have an assassin, since we have an assassin in the group. It's like, oh, I brought my own. Yeah, sorry, sure. we're gonna be needing you. <laughs> um, things like the strategic shield, which is a a house asset that's supposed to block like a city from attack. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, Let's see. So we got probably some basic ones in here, just making your character work the way you think it might. I mean, if you expect combat, then a combat asset isn't a bad idea. Does anyone have any wild assets? I have a map. Any? You have a map. Oh, you I have you're a, map. a map. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, maps are, are unreliable. So having a reliable map is ah. is considered an asset. So, um, you know, uh, let me look at it on my sheet because I copied everything. Um, Good. Good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a re reliable map can reveal a lot about a planet, the people, the local houses, and all that stuff. Um, yeah, and these maps are just uh, much better. Like so, and it, this map will show what they're hiding, resources, weapons, technology, warehouses, oh, sweeping changes to an map. environment might all be there. Yeah, so it's like a really yeah. good map, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. A lot of these have like keywords underneath, and that one has secret information. Yeah. So yep. it should tell you something secret you didn't know already when yeah. you use that also, asset. Also a personal suspenser, uh, because I just want to float all the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, power move, you know? Yeah, Why right. walk right. when you don't have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, is, that is interesting. I mean, I don't want to give too much away, but like the, the spacing guild, right? Uh, the uh -huh. higher you get up into them, 
whoa, wild things can happen. So your yeah. your character, I, I'm prepping. You're prepping. I'm getting ready. <laughs> you just need the helmet with just spice in it all the time, right? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Right now, <laughs> have you seen uh, what is it? Blue velvet, where he's. <laughs> I figure I'm just walking around with a canister, mm -hmm. occasionally huff, huffing the spice. Very nice. Well, I got you covered. I got a little baby sandworm. You know, mm -hmm. let's hook the worm up to you. I got to hook the butt up to your suit, and it's good. good. Wow, the team up here is terrifying. I love it. I love it. Uh, should I take verite, which is a plant that grows only on the planet Ikas? And it is a narcotic that compels people to tell the truth. Ooh. <laughs> that sounds Not amazing. Bad. I'm going to take it. <laughs> that sounds That's perfect good. for uh, Bene Gesserit. Yeah, it is a, yeah, it says it's a vi viable alternative to a Bene Gesserit truth sayer. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So good. Yes. And according to the description, impossible to resist. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Is anyone taking any... Uh, Safo, which is essentially a uh, red me. bull for, that's for spacers. Oh, yeah. That's for Mintats. That's me. <laughs> okay. And dibs on that. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'm absolutely going to be slamming that. Uh, uh, yeah. From that same planet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I love the idea that we have these because they exist in the lore. But if we wanted to come up with alternate versions for our specific Dune, you know, if we if we had a drink that came from Spice World instead, um, that seemed to get, give Mentat similar powers, you know, feel free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Hmm. I like it. Oh. I'm Very cool. Figure, I'm trying to figure out something that's 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 on bright. I'm trying to stay away from like spy too much spy or assassin stuff because that's not really my jam. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking for information driven stuff. And I, I think mm -hmm. this uh, the Radulian crystal. It's just, it's just a, just, just so I understand the concept here. I'm coming, I'm coming from a, from systems that are much more defined and rigid. If sure. I just like have this, it's like, okay, I, my character has a book and that's something we could in play. It's, it's sort of an improv prop that I can bring out. It's like, oh, this is that book I was talking about. Mm -hmm. It's a book about this. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. When you use an asset, so a lot of it is, the game focuses on importance. Um, that's a big deal. A trait exists as long as it is important and relevant. Uh, as soon as it's not, it's gone. Just forget about it, move on. Um, and your assets are kind of the same deal. So your assets should give you an advantage beyond just, I have them, right? Um, our our ability to meta talk <laughs> as adventurers, right? Means that often we think that our characters have earpieces where we can just you know connect and communicate all the time. Uh, that's how every D&D game I always play ends up working. Um, <laughs> so. So, you know, we, we need to make sure that if we have those in the game, they give us something meaningful. I think like a, a level above what we would normally get. So okay. they should be important. So when you bring it out, whoa, we're learning something. We're getting something interesting. You're, you're like taking in a book. I think those kind of have like a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Absorption. That's not it. But <laughs> <laughs> do they quickly write other books? Amanusis? Is that it? <laughs> I think you're making things up. I, yeah, I'm the DM. <laughs> that is how it works now. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I've got Perfect. okay. I've got the 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 Sappho, uh, Radulian crystal book, and I'm thinking crim crimiscale crimscale fiber rope. Uh, oh, nice. It yeah. is. Uh, when pulled, the fiber will claw itself together into a tighter and tighter, stronger composite. Uh, attempting to escape being bound with the fiber instead reinforces the bonds. I'm not here to fight. But I, uh, I, I will press an advantage. Absolutely. Of, it's like it's a, it's like I don't if I if I'm like I don't want this person coming after us. Um, right. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna just tie them up. And so we're done. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, and there we go. Map. I took my yeah. suspenser, and then I decided to take the Sibis hood or whatever it is, just because it's cool. And I don't know how my character is going to use it yet, but it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to uh, to choose an asset for sure uh now i'll have to look that one up that's why we're really doing this so i can look everything up and counter it no no um <laughs> i just want to make sure you get you get to use the things you pick you know yeah i i, I tossed it in the uh the roll 20 chat the description but essentially the citizen hood enables the user to easily escape notice and blend into crowds so it's just ah, like yes. a hood and it blacks out your face type of thing oh right nice. yeah i saw that one too very yeah, cool yeah. very cool i like it 
Oh. Well, these characters, I'm getting a sense of mystery about this group, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. All right, this is going to fit with my adventurous plans exceedingly well. Um, but I don't want to jump into our, st our story yet uh, because we've got a little bit more to do. I want to make sure everybody's done. Um, do I have to have three assets? Um, I mean, if you wanted to have two and we could sort one out later, then that, that might make sense as well. Um, okay, no, I raise think, the oh. limit. You, you've got okay. some cool ones though, because that's kind of a flex. Like, yeah, you can have all the stuff, like, <laughs> I don't need three. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm quite I'm good, good at role playing. I mean, I'm gonna take a still suit. Um, yeah. I'm thinking about a Jabba cloak just because, like, that appeals to like the smuggler in me. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like a boon to survivalist, you know, it's yeah. various styles and functions. I want I, the idea of being like a stylish Fremen that also has a lot of functionality, very appealing to me. Very nice. Uh, I like that. Yeah, I can make a hammock out of it. <laughs> but then like, I don't know what else. Like I got spicy yeah. poops as an asset, but I don't know, like does he count already? Like, is he just the asset? I mean, I, it kind of depends on how much you want to use spicy poops. Um, every, every moment, all the time. Let's see. Is is uh, <laughs> is spicy poops? Spicy poops. There we go. Whoops. Uh, spicy <laughs> poops. Um, a helpful pet that you're hanging out with, or is this a, an asset that you will be using to do things during the game? Uh, knowing me, I'm just probably gonna like interject that like spicy poops looks really cute right now. Gotcha. Um, I don't really see the big. I, I say this, I don't see them being useful, but like, lo and behold, like well, in the first scene, we'll have a situation where I'm going to be like, oh my god, my sandworm could solve this whole entire problem. Right. Uh, you can, so, yeah. You can squeeze some uh, liquid out of them and survive. Mm -hmm. That's how they're used. Yep. You could also, uh, uh, like, put them around your hand like a glove. And yeah. if you do, if you do that enough, then you can become a sandworm yourself. Yes, yeah, that didn't work out so great for the first person who did it. <laughs> <laughs> I, you could argue oh, it worked out really well from a certain perspective. <laughs> from a certain perspective. From a certain point of view. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> um, I, I would also say that, that kind of it is is about this intent. Like, if you want to go this route, that sounds like an asset. If you do want someday okay. to to squeeze your sandworm and a little bit of spice comes out, if you want to use your sandworm to detect. Um, people walking around or anything, detect tremors, like all of that sounds like an yeah. asset. Okay, did, okay, uh, done, done. Versus deal. cosmetic, yeah. Did, did anyone <laughs> take any kind of transport asset and or pilot? No, nope. okay. I was thinking about it, but so far no. <laughs> all right, well, I am now changing one of my focuses to pilot and I'm grabbing an ornithopter. Okay, very oh, nice. Figured, Ooh, okay. Great, okay. Yeah, I figured it'd be fun for us to have someone who could pilot. That's so useful. That's smart. Yeah. My sandworm's still a baby. We can't ride them yet. So I, I have a question, Rich. <laughs> of course. The uh, assets don't include things like medical supplies. No, they do have poisons, and I've taken that. Um, <laughs> is it assumed that I have that kind of gear, or should I make that an asset? That's a good idea. I think that you should uh, should have that as an asset. What I want to check real quick is I wanna, I'm going to look at talents just to see if they have a medical talent instead. Um, mm. But it seems like they should have some sort of medical supplies. They have things like adrenaline shot, which I took. Mm. Um, and they have some sort of general, like you can remove, uh, you know, help people with various health things. So they have talents like that, mm -hmm. but nothing that was broad. So, okay. So I'll, I'll gotcha. dump, I was going to take a glow globe, but I'm going to dump that and take a medical kit. Okay. Yeah. That would make sense to me. Um, I think that's the best way to do that. I was, I was thinking glow globe too, but it, it then I was like, yeah, this is like the light spell. I'm, I'm never glad I take the light spell. I'm like, oh. right? Yeah, <laughs> You're always whole party has dark vision except yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what they get for playing humans. You know, it's a are <laughs> right there. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay. No, here's I don't what want to play a cool sexy devil. Assets. I want to be a guy. All right. <laughs> Okay, so my assets are ex-agent, so I'll have some connections with uh, some other stealthy people. I'm turning into like a uh -huh. stealth person here. Um, I have verite, where uh, if we ever need to get information out of someone and get the truth out of them, we can feed them this narcotic. <laughs> and distrans, which is I can send animal encoded messages through animals to other people. So I'm uh. turning into kind of like a stealthy spy person. That's yeah. awesome. With my assets. Wow. I feel like this is the stuff that supports the diplomacy I'm doing. 
you know? It's just mm -hmm. kind of like the underbelly of it. Absolutely. Oh, this is good. This is very good. Okay. I like that. I like it. Um, so it sounds like we're getting some great assets. Um, we have one last thing to do with your characters. I think it's the last thing besides talents. And again, on your own. <laughs> um, you need to come up with uh, personality traits. Um, these are big, right? These are, again, uh, we're going to call these out because they are important. If someone talks to you for five minutes, they should know these things. And you have three of them. Uh, one of them is the name of your archetype, whatever that is. Uh, if you have a faction, that's also in there. Um, uh, did we land on whether Twisted Mintad is a faction? I think we lost Rich. Or not? Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. He's oh, been assassinated well. by a rival faction. And, uh, oh, God. Paula Dean. Paula Dean got to Rich, and mm. uh, that was the end. There's going to be a stick Coming of back? butter where his body once was. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? This is the final. This is the final version of any of true role play. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, Rich! Thank God. Got 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 Dean got you. I just like Oof. almost burst into tears. Oh. <laughs> um. So, so Paula Dean attacked right in the middle. Of the mm -hmm. Game. Um. Yeah. We. Uh. I was saying something before, and then I panicked, and so I forgot what the thing was. Um. <laughs> Oh, traits. So we're about personality about traits. Personality traits. Mine is sometimes invisible. Um, so these traits should come up often. You should have one that is uh, your the name of your archetype. If you have a faction, throw that in there as well. Um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the you have two more. One of them, all of you have the trait zesty because you remember yeah. uh, the house <laughs> of posh. Um, and the last one is up to you. It is it is personality trait that someone would know. Uh, whatever it is, you want it to be kind of like a quick and easy thing to be able to to talk about, because again, these traits come up. They allow you to say, "I should be able to do this because my character is zesty," or "I should be able to do this because my character is." Um, and so we want to get specific with a single one, but like, like me choosing zealotry is that a word? How do you zealot? Mm -hmm. Zealous. Yeah. Zealous. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's very good. <laughs> zesty zealotry. A zesty good. zealot. <laughs> We're gonna go with inscrutable. Ooh, very Ooh. nice. I like that. So, so people talking to you maybe not actually know that. No, they would know you're inscrutable. Maybe they don't know your other traits immediately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like that. I mean, they they can never figure out what I'm up to, right? Right. Never. Um, My personality traits are so zesty, Benny Jesuit. Mm -hmm. And crafty. Crafty. I like yes. that. Okay. I'm a zesty uh, space guild agent who likes to take risks. So I put risk taker. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Okay. I like it. I like it. Whew. Let's see, Cohen, what about you? Got analyst, zesty, and unnerving. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Ooh. laughs> it was a toss up between that and off putting. But mm -hmm. I like unnerving specifically. <laughs> I see. I see. Yeah. Um, right. Let's see. For that one specifically, I'm now thinking of Thor Ragnarok, the moments where uh, Bruce Banner walks into the room where Loki is chained up and his eyebrow like climbs off of his face, like <laughs> so high in the air, just looking at Loki for a second after one sentence. Yeah, yeah. That's that is going to happen here. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been watching a lot of that. Uh, Perfect. Good show. Well, I watch that to prepare for every yeah. every adventure I write. I just watch Aww. the rock in the background. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> um, perfect. Well, I think overall, uh, we are done with these characters. I mean, like I said, we've got some talents to sort out. Um, but we'll take a look at that over the next couple of days, the next week, and uh, and see what those are. How they will affect your characters. They do it in minor ways, some in major ways, and they all depend on the situation. So, should be fun. Um, but I want to go ahead and let's see. It is 7.04, which I think just leaves us enough time to start the story of this group and our adventure for the week. Yes. You feeling it? Are we ready? Yeah. yeah. Ready? yeah. Oh, my I'm gonna, gosh. I'm going to re-up. I'm going to re-up my tweet. Okay. We've yeah. done it. We have, we've done all of the character creation there is. I'm so excited. Uh, thank you all. This has been it's so fantastic to see and like see this group change, see how you're all attached to the House of Posh. I like it. <laughs> The, like the, the characters are definitely a lot different than when we sat down to do this too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I really like oh the word, way yeah. I, I really enjoy the way that this this book has taken us. You know, and you, Rich, has have taken us through the sheet. 
and you know the things like the focus the statements and that type of stuff is just really great i, I don't know i've been I, I just wanted to mention that i've been enjoying it yeah me too yeah this is really cool wow wow okay well good i'm glad to hear it i'm glad um <laughs> Because we've got three more weeks of adventure to go, and I want to make sure these characters feel good and that we're excited about them. I am excited about them and where they might go. Um, excellent. Well, um, let's see. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, I I want us to begin. Um, so so as we start, right, we want to get to know our characters a little bit. I want to give you a little bit of time to think about them. I mean, we're, we're not living in them just yet, but I think we're getting pretty close. Um, and I feel like what we have developed is this group of I, I don't want to say rogues, um, <laughs> but we're kind of on that that level, right? Uh, we got we got some, yeah. some motivations mm -hmm. in mind. I mean, Elisa's character seems the most law-abiding, and I say <laughs> that with the least amount of law-abidingness. Right. Exactly. Uh, you know? I, on the surface, am very law-abiding, but oh goodness, I am. There's machinations happening. Are you really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's see. So. Um, as I'm looking at characters, I know that Teos, you wrote down that your character has a hyphenated last name. You are a member of House, the House of Posh. You have Spice at the end. Um, do you see your character as being a like up there in the hierarchies of the house? Yeah, yeah. I think that um, I'm one of the the trusted members that okay. uh, our higher ups turn to for these to sort of deploy uh, initiatives. Okay. Right, and and it's all yeah. under the guise of n health and nutrition. Excellent, uh, but it can take many forms, including removing mm -hmm. obstacles. <laughs> gotcha, I like it. Well, of course, the House of Posh takes up a planet. Um, you have minor houses around, sure. Maybe your planet, Spice World, does not have seven billion people on it. Um, but all of you may not be known precisely to the highest levels of the house. You know, maybe you are operating under a supervisor, under a supervisor, you know, it's levels and levels before you get to one of the spices. Um, who knows? Uh, but I think I want to begin uh, in kind of a simple way. Um, I want to start one day in the life of, um, of Aliza's character. Aliza, tell us, your, your character's name is Jaselnica. Is that yes. right? Jaselnica, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, and today, uh, just like any other day here on, in, like every day at Spice World, um, it is uh, pleasant, right? I mean, I would say that this planet chosen for Spice is probably a nice warm place, uh, regular rain to make sure crops uh, exist well, but not too much to dry things out, right? Or to, to keep things too wet. Um, and you have the city itself. And most people may have reasons why they are off and around in the, the lands of spice and the fields out there. But your character, I sense, is going to have some reasons to hang out in the rack. Um, right? Dealing with the house, talking to people, things like that. Uh, and one day, just like most any other days, um, you are, are doing your thing. You're living your life. And you are approached by a messenger. Uh, wearing the House of Posh colors, of course. Uh, and they step forward and they simply hand you uh, a piece of paper and they turn and walk away. Uh, they bow, of course, but <laughs> they're here to deliver a message uh, and leave. Okay. Um, I'm going to read this, open up this I mean, message and read it. Excellent. You look inside and it is... I, I don't want you to get too excited about this, but you have been invited to dine backstage. Uh, that is the most exclusive restaurant in the rack anywhere. This is legendary dishes are served here representing, you know, a thousand years of culinary experimentation here on Spice World. Uh, this is a place that leaders of distant houses will come to, right? They'll wait years for their opportunity to come backstage, uh, sit down and dine, or dine, excuse me, with the galactic elite. Um, you know, it's where decisions are made. It's a place that, that I feel like uh, uh, Jaselnica would want to get into, and uh, and I don't think you ever have. This is this is a big deal. Um, yeah, and it is yes, for it is. Uh, strangely this evening uh, before service begins. Oh, interesting. Okay, uh, I think about how this aligns with what my 
ambition, I actually changed it uh, Ooh, since okay. we last talked. It's now become a revered envoy and bolster House of Posh. Well. <laughs> so, yes, I am really trying to social climb my way into being the envoy and getting invitations like this all the time. So this is very exciting for me. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, in that case, you know, travel around the rack is, is pretty easy because they want people moving all times. Uh, I'm sure we've got animals moving around, getting people from place to place. There's people walking everywhere. Uh, lots of streets, probably curved streets, right? It's making sure you can't see the horizons of the city at any moment, right? You're always kept in um, in this maze of the rack. I love it. I love thinking about this city. <laughs> um, but Jaselnica is is brought to right to the edge of backstage and there's people waiting in line already and they're they're well dressed they're ready for this and you kind of get led up to the front and the doors open wide um backstage is a wild place there's the interior often changes on on whatever whim for whatever we want it to look like they have um painting set up that they change often they bring in different plants they, they bring in different scents to make it feel like different places at any moment and today it is a beachfront scene well lit daylight in here um feels very, very comfortable, maybe. And uh, and strangely, very empty. Hmm. You get walked in, and uh, and the two two folks at the, the door, the two guards here, they kind of close the door after you go in. Um, a server brings you to a table. It uh, It's just a high top with two glasses of water on it. Um, and they bow to you, and they walk away, leaving you totally alone in this room. Okay, I'd like to look around. Perfect. And just see, yeah, see what's what's up. Do I notice okay. anything? This is odd. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, basic stuff you could certainly get. Like, um, uh, it's strange because it is dinner service coming relatively soon. So you would feel like this place would normally, you know, according to the rules and traditions of the house, already be set for a large banquet <laughs> this evening. Um, you know, there were a lot of folks outside, so they're definitely holding off on on getting ready for for the night for whatever's about to happen. I also, I can I roll to to look around for more details because I also have a talent. Yes. Where, um, Okay, so let me read this talent. It is hyper awareness. Whenever you spend momentum to obtain a information about the current situation, your current location or person you can observe, you may ask two questions for the first point. Oh, I don't have any momentum yet. Well, can I roll right. and then see if I get momentum and then? <laughs> this is such yeah. a beautiful thing. We, have, we haven't chatted about momentum yet. Like a big deal in the game is of course, if you are super successful, if you gain more successes than, you're, than you need for any task, you, the group gains momentum. You can have a total of six. Um, you can spend them in a lot of different ways, but one of the ways is just to ask a question. You just ask me anything about the scene that's up right now. Um, and hyper awareness means, of course, whenever you do that, you gain more things, <laughs> which is pretty yeah. fantastic. Okay. I like yeah, that can ability. I, can I roll to look around and see yeah. any other, so, like, yeah. So tell me, how are you going to do this? Are you you're clearly, I mean, looking around, trying to see what's going on? I, I would say that feels like an understand check, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. But, um, yeah. I would say understand for sure. Okay. Um, let's see. Which of I your drives? Yeah. Power. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, <clears throat> yeah, I'm wanting to see uh, if there's any advantage that I can gain by being aware of my surroundings in whatever interactions mm -hmm. I'm about to have with people in this place. I like it. Okay, that's that's very good. All right. Um, so that sounds a lot like uh, eight plus five is thirteen. Uh, you don't have a focus here, so go ahead and roll two d twenty, and uh, right. you're trying to roll a thirteen or Oops. less. I just rolled one on D on uh, roll twenties. Oh, where did the roll show up? Does anyone see my roll in here? <laughs> uh, that you was a thirteen 13. on that one. Uh, it's on the uh, the little text bubbles on the sidebar. If you click on that, it's way down at the bottom. <laughs> text bubble on the sidebar. Which side? Right on the right? right side. Sorry, right up side. at the top. There's a little double text bubble. That is that is for the chat, and all of the rolls go to the chat. Wait, there it time. is. Yeah. Okay, great. And now I roll my second d20. Yeah. So what? one success, two successes. I got wow. two thirteens. Very that nice. Weird. <laughs> That's all right. Really, that augurs really well for for the for the for our, our successes very exciting <laughs> right it's ah. a good start 
Um, you look around and you think about this scene, and this scene is odd. I mean, they're making the place empty, allowing you to be here. You're not sure that you warrant being alone in this place, you know? You're not sure this is all for you. Um, and you look around at the beach and you realize you actually have heard a rumor that someone's favorite restaurant decor here is the beachfront. Um, and I would say with that success, you believe that you are about to, uh, to meet with a very important member of house leadership. Uh, maybe, well, you think about it and you look and the doors open and in a, just this blaze of just glowing like sunlit uh, light coming back through it. All you can see is this silhouette. Um, you look forward and you know, you know exactly who it is. Head chef Guy Fieri Spice doesn't just enter a room. He, he illuminates a room. Uh, he steps up. He moves forward. And you're like, is he is he dancing? Is he is that just his <laughs> normal walk? I don't know what's, what's happening. <laughs> Um, he's got some moves. <laughs> he's got some moves. Um, as he gets closer, you can see the long crimson cape that he wears, um, the traditional frosted tips of the house leadership. Yes, um, yes, of course. And uh, of course, he's wearing a dark leather vest with two chef's knives stuck right in it, uh, ready to pull out at any moment. Um, the head chef does not mess around. Mm -hmm. um, and he steps forward and he says, ah, welcome, come sit. And he snaps, let's, let's get some food in here. <laughs> and almost yeah. immediately, people bring forth some inhale lettuce, uh, a plate of jumbo lump crab meat, um, and also 54 <laughs> aqua snakes. <laughs> oh. All in a little soup. <laughs> Such delicacies. Wow. Such delicacies. <laughs> wow. And, um, I mean, Pretty good, right? Uh, certainly our three winners from last week. Uh, we'll talk about our raffle this week <laughs> in a few minutes. Um, and he says, and let's 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 get through this intro at the very least before we have to go today. Uh, the meal is wonderful, right? These are foods that, that you've heard about, important recipes never tried, and this is your opportunity to taste what the house is up to right now. Um, does uh, does do you eat? Does Jacelnica eat? <laughs> Yes, I will eat. Are okay. there tasters? Do I can I Ooh. wait for tasters to come, or is that going to happen here? I, I think the inhale lettuce is a taster, like a very small lettuce cup. Oh no! With some, I uh, meant, just like... I'm, I'm sorry. I meant uh, people to taste the food to make sure it's not poison. <laughs> ah, because I'm, I'm ah. Eating there are two kinds chef. of tasters. Yeah, I'm eating with I head chips, so I feel like I wrote it down. And forgot to mention it. Uh, yes, indeed. You you look over, and with that great understand check, you would you would see them kind of silhouetted in the back of the room. Still, there's that bright like daylight coming out. Um, there are two figures back there. Uh, one of them is eating a little bit of these foods off the plate before they go out, and the other is this imposing figure um, wearing a, a. You can see the hilt of a, a sword at their side. Uh, seem to be wearing almost like a, a metal, like very box like suit. Uh, and a huge, what seems to be a helmet with kind of like a, almost a mohawk out of the top. Um, but all you can see is their silhouette and, uh, and you look over worried that you have gotten sight of the chopped and then they step backwards into the kitchen. <laughs> but yes, the food is tasted before you get okay. to it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Then yes, oh. I do eat. All right. Good. He watches very excited as you are eating the food. Uh, just lets you have this wonderful experience. Uh, but uh, Guy Fieri Spice wants to talk. And he says, all right, I've got a mission. It is vitally important, but it is also vitally important that it doesn't seem vitally important. If you get my drift, you know? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I think I do, head chef. Good, good. Ola, Ola Shadam, uh, sorry, you know, uh, Padishah Emperor Shadam IV, uh, want to mix it up. He's getting a little bored with the, the lens rod and wants to shake up the whole pyrodynamic here in the galaxy. So he's invited five houses on a survey mission of Arrakis. Like, that doesn't seem like much, but this is huge. This is huge. This is our opportunity. I mean, if we get stewardship over like a tiny little slice of that planet, that's a step towards making it up to the big leagues. It's a, a, like a great house. Mm. I, I want it. I want it. But if it looks like I want it, we won't get it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is this is very important. Except for you, no one else from like front of house can be involved. Um, no hosts. No. Uh, no anyone who's out on the big stage day in day out. Right. Um, 
but you, I think, have some house connections that you might be able to flex, gather up a group, um, head out to this planet, maybe uh, do a little surveying. Who knows? They got to be yes. good. They got to be good, the best, but uh, but not someone who's going to be recognized on sight. I have some people in mind. Yeah. Yes. Who do you got? Who do you got? <laughs> well, um, um, there's Dr. Yuan, who I think would be very good for this mission. <laughs> um, there's. <laughs> yeah. There's also uh, Jimmy Nebraska. No, that's not. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, wait, actually, yes, Jimmy Nebraska. Um, oh, Jimmy. you don't. You don't want Jimmy Nebraska. He's gonna be. Oh. He's gonna be out on 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 business. Oh, never mind. No, no Jimmy Nebraska then. Uh, there's Agent Brad Montana. I think Ooh. he would be Ooh. very good. There's also Drill High. <laughs> uh, they would be amazing for this. Uh, and Parmoon. Uh, we definitely should have Parmoon for this mission. Parmoon has special knowledge of Arrakis that I think we need. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, um, he kind of looks around uh, and looks back at you and he says, well, what we're going to do next time as we begin this adventure <laughs> is, uh, is we're going to go around in montage style, find out what these folks are up to, get some okay. cinematic moments Ooh. for each of them before we go on off on our mission. Head um, chef. Head I, chef. I love, I love montages. Head chef. That's a great idea. We should yes. do a montage. Yes. Excellent. It's like high fives. <laughs> The music comes up. <laughs> so that slow motion high five. Right. Excellent. Um, and that's going to be our, our brief little intro, right? You, you're you heading to Arrakis pretty quickly yes. um, to find out if the House of Posh deserves a place on the planet, like stewardship over some of this spice. Um, who knows? You're going to need the best you can get, uh, right. which hopefully is this team that we have developed right here. Um we got to go to Arrakis. I mean, it was asked in the chat whether yeah. Dune must focus on Arrakis, and it doesn't need to. But if you don't choose the spice, you got to choose something pretty, you know, pretty spicy mm -hmm. for uh, for your first big mission. Something as important. Um, oh, speaking of sandworm pets, uh, my cat is a red. Aww. <laughs> is that marzipan? <laughs> there is. It is tentacle time. All right. <laughs> it is oh, marzipan indeed. I miss marzipan. Um, <laughs> just your cat. All right. I'm so excited. Uh, I love spending time like building these characters, making sure we got them ready to go. I'm very excited to find out about this character montage. And I want you to think about some of the challenges your characters might face as we do these, because this is going to be our opportunity to roll some dice, to see how the game works <laughs> right away. Um, but uh, before we go, I want to check in. Let's see. Uh, we, of course, have this raffle that's been going on. Um, if, uh, if you are interested in joining and you have weren't here at the start, you can go ahead and follow us here at Saving Throw. And uh, let's see, you got to type in, once you do that, exclamation mark raffle, and then some number for how many spaces you would like. Marzipan, come on. <laughs> um, <laughs> some, uh, some number of tickets so that you can get your opportunity to get this wonderful book that we are playing all uh, for the next three weeks. Um, and as you were doing that and getting signed up uh, for that raffle, we'll get that raffle run in a second. Uh, let's find out where our fantastic folks can be found on the internet so that you can track them down over the next seven days. Find out what they're, excuse me, not seven. Yeah, seven days. I saw seven minutes. Um, over the next week and find out what their big climactic moments are going to be as we introduce these characters and, uh, and start digging into the land of Dune. Oh, goodness. This is perfect. Um, let's, uh, let's, start, uh, let's start in reverse alphabetical with Teos. The doctor, uh, where can find you? <laughs> you can find me on Thursday. Our podcast episode will drop for Mastering Dungeons on the Misdirected Mark Network. Uh, you'll be able to find my blog post on Thursday as well. So Thursday is your favorite day in my land. Um, and yeah, that's all the news. I'm excited about your cat. I think we have to call it like worm sign. It's cat sign. <laughs> Yeah. We, got, yeah. we, got, we, got, yeah. we got worms. Got yeah, that's going to happen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Excellent. Perfect, perfect. Uh, let's see. I had to change some headphones there. Justin, where can we find you? you got some stuff coming up this week, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, my next DJ stream is going to be Friday. Um, tomorrow night, I may be drafting um, Forgotten Realms uh, Magic the Gathering on my channel. So uh, if you want to come check that out, that'd be rad. If not, it's fine. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, my channel is uh, DJ Pirate Rabbits. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on all the socials there. And uh, I also do this other little show called Owlbear Soup, 
<laughs> with uh, with this with with my brother-in-law. Uh, he's kind of weird. Don't don't tell him I said that. And uh, it's right here on Sundays at uh, two o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Perfect, I think that's perfect. all my stuff. I don't know. It's good stuff. That's a good list. <laughs> all right, Cohen. What about you? Oh me, uh, you can find me streaming at Twitch TV dot uh, Twitch TV slash Game Worms. Uh, that's Worms with a U. Uh, tomorrow morning at eight a.m. Eastern, uh, nine a.m. Pacific, which is probably too early for most of this stream. Uh, I'm finishing up Death Stranding, which we've been playing for Jesus, like three months at this point, like two hours <laughs> two hours ago. It's a uh, it's a hoot. And then in the afternoon, starting at noon, building this boy. Uh, never done this one of these before, so I'm very excited. Ooh. I got the whole two is that cameras. A set up. It is a. It is. It is from Evangelion. It's a oh, big. Dang. It's a. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. I got a little. I got a special knife, and like a, oh, I got gosh. this thing people do. Yeah. I, don't, I have no idea what I'm doing, uh, but I'm I'm excited. So that's going to be noon Eastern tomorrow. Maybe a little more accessible for the uh, LA crowd, you know. So like also Skull Mandible on Twitter. I think the link was already in the chat. So that's me. Excellent. Uh, just to, just because I'm curious, didn't they just announce the director's cut of Death Stranding? Are you start they that sure next? did <laughs> announce that within a week of me being almost done with playing that game for several months. Uh, they sure absolutely <laughs> did do that. Uh, I, I, you know, God bless them. I'm probably not going to play it for several years because I'm <laughs> almost done. Yeah. You've done enough. Thank you. I've Thank you for your service. <laughs> I'm the great deliverer. That's <laughs> B, where can we find you this week? Yeah. Hello. Hello. I'm your busy non-binary B. You can find me on Twitter is at B underscore Zelda. I am a podcaster, a member of the Broadswords, a host of Anime Attaché, and a player in Power Play. I am a regular streamer. I've got Dune here on Tuesdays, Tabletop Otaku, where I talk to game designers on Wasabi Anime. I play Kids on Brooms on Fridays on Nomadic's channel. And early later on Fridays, I play Cape and Blade, which is a chimera blend of fantasy in superhero genres and then on sunday i play q times where i am a robot slash alien who loves plants i am also recently announced as the DD uh, adventures league community manager which is a lot of fun <laughs> perfect perfect excellent amazing. i know i'm so happy i'm so yeah. happy for you yeah. <laughs> thank you that's awesome all right. And Aliza, where can we find you this week? Well, you can always find me at Aliza Pearl on Twitter and Instagram. And this week in particular, I will be back with uh, Lords of Faerun. I'm the DM for that 5e campaign. Lots of fun dragony things happening there. Um, so that's Saturdays at 1230 p.m. at twitch.tv slash Kira858. And then what are my other things coming up? Oh, this weekend, uh, the podcast uh, that I am a, a co-host of called Women at Warp, um, which is about Trekkies, women talking about Trek stuff. We are doing a, it's called the IDIC Podcast Festival. So Infinite Diversity and Infinite Combinations Podcast Festival. It's a festival that is just celebrating and highlighting all these wonderful diverse voices in Star Trek podcasting specifically. Two wow. days of awesome live podcasts from amazing people who are Trekkies and also um, women and non-binary people and people of color and disabled people talking about Star Trek through our various different lenses and it's dope it's really excited exciting oh my gosh yes yeah That's you should, yeah. All should definitely check it out so i can also like share the link uh, i'll tweet out the link after this okay but, Perfect. Um, Please, the, thank you yeah the website is women at warp.com forward slash idic dash fest so if you want to see everyone who's who's going to be podcasting that weekend go check that out and then yeah next week i'm back here and on Thursday, we're going to actually, oh, actually, I don't know if I can announce that. I'm not going to announce that yet. Next week, I'll <laughs> <Okay>. tell you. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. I just realized they haven't tweeted about it, so I'm not going to share that yet. <laughs> Got it. Perfect. All right. Cool. Um, I like it. Wow. That all sounds fantastic. I want to see it all now. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'm Rich. You should check us out on Sundays for Owlbear Soup. I know Justin already talked about it. That's where we get to talk about RPGs all the time. Um, and then, yeah, just come back here next Tuesday, because next Tuesday, the adventure begins truly with our character montage moving into, I don't know, probably a trip that'll be super easy just surveying the sands of Arrakis. Um, I can't wait. Uh, 
to uh, to go on this journey with all of you. A pleasure um, cruise to oh, Arrakis. Indeed, right? mm -hmm. We'll take one of those those nice pleasure carriers the Spacing yeah. Guild has, right? Mm -hmm. It'll be great. Um, let's see. Oh, fantastic. Um, and with that, we want to check out real quick. Uh, we've got a raffle going, right? Um, do we have our three big winners here? Um, ooh. Check in the chat right now. It looks like Vampire54 has won the free uh, a free copy of the Dune Adventures in the Imperium RPG. So it's Sir Woo! Beast 1269 and Norman Lambert 45. Fantastic, folks. Wow. Um, enjoy yeah. that book. It's, That's so it's so it's such a good book. It's, I really like it. I really, really do. Yeah. Um uh read through it. Don't read through some sections. Uh read the start. Starts really, really good. Leave the rest <laughs> for uh later. Uh, <laughs> No, and reason. don't and uh, don't start a don't start a don't start a Twitch streaming thing where you do it yourself for at least a couple more weeks. Please. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You got to give us the spotlight. Please. Yeah, yeah, right. We want it. We want it real bad. Um, but do read it, enjoy it. I think the book is fantastic. And if you got questions, let us know next week. Um, but yes, our adventure will begin. I'm so excited. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, thank you. Of course, you five for being here. And for those of you out in the chat who's been listening this whole time and watching, thank you. And thank you for your questions. And um, I suppose we'll see you next week. Peace out. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> See you next week. Bye.